Morning, Jam. It was great to see some family pictures last week. We've had some more photos in for this week. Well, apparently life hasn't been a roller coaster of fun activities for the wards just recently, but they're still plugging away with Beat the Street, racking up those points for Portway School. Well done, Chloe and Ethan. Uh, Ethan there, looking either very cool or extremely grumpy. Thanks for the update, wards. And here we have a picture from the Curran family. Looks like the Curran boys had Beth round for some yummy chips, but they got completely soggy and cold in the rain. And so did the chips. Ugh! Do you like cold, wet chips? I don't. But I'm sure it was fun seeing each other all the same. Do keep those photos coming in. Well, after that long, 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 long wait, everything the prophets had said was going to happen was starting to happen. John the Baptist, God's new prophet, came to make sure everyone was ready for God's special king. And then one day, there he was, standing in front of John, asking to be baptised. Jesus, the perfect person, the spirit-filled king, the son of God with whom the father is well pleased. He was finally there. The day that all creation had been waiting for, like someone who's holding their breath for ages. And finally, there he was. The Messiah. God's perfect king, Jesus, had arrived. Now, just before we hear our bit of the Bible for today, we're going to play a quick game of Jesus Says. It's the same as Simon Says, but we'll say Jesus instead of Simon. So I'm going to give you instructions and you have to follow them. But only if I say Jesus Says. So if I say Jesus says, tap your head, you'll need to tap your head. But if I just say, poke your nose, then don't do it. Because I didn't say, Jesus says, poke your nose. Okay, are we ready? Jesus says, tap your head. Jesus says, clap your hands. Jesus says, rub your tummy. Now put your hands in the air. Oh no, I didn't say Jesus says. Did you do it anyway? Okay, Jesus says, jump up and down. Jesus says, wiggle all around. Now laugh out loud. Oh no, I didn't say Jesus says. Did you laugh out loud? Okay, last turn. Jesus says, do a dance. Jesus says, spin around. Jesus says, Pretend to be a chicken. Buck, 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 ah! Jesus says, do a smile. Now stick your tongue out. I didn't say Jesus says. I wonder if I managed to catch any of you out there. Okay. Now Matt is going to read from the Bible for us. And as he reads, see if you can hear what Jesus says. Try and listen out for what Jesus tells the different people to do. Hi Jam, this is Mark chapter 1 verses 14 to 28. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. 
As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Thanks, Matt. Did you hear Jesus said, The time has come. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. The time has come. I sometimes fill up my drinking bottle from the tap in our kitchen. I can hear it filling up, but I can't see it until it's suddenly there. And once it reaches the top, the fresh water just starts pouring out over the top. And Jesus says it's a bit like that with him arriving. It's like through all of history up to this point, time has been filling up. The prophets and the teachers didn't know when he would come, but they could hear it coming. And now, the time has come. The water has reached the top. The time is full. So all of God's good plans are starting to flow out and happen. The kingdom of God has come near. Well, of course it has. The king is standing right there on the earth in the middle of all these people. The king has arrived and he's about to start his great kingly work. He's about to do everything that needs to be done to save his people and bring them into his kingdom. But how will that happen? What do people have to do to come into his kingdom? People come into his kingdom as they see him and respond the right way to him. But what is the right way to respond to Jesus? Well, our passage today showed us the right response to Jesus is what he told us to do. Repent, believe, and then come and serve. So repent and believe the good news and serve Jesus. This is what Jesus commands. It's the only way of being saved and becoming part of his kingdom. It's like we're playing Jesus says, but Jesus says, repent and believe and serve me. He says it, so we have to do it. But what does repent and believe mean? Well, let's start off with repent. Repent is a word that's a little bit like change or turn around. We went recently to a place called Urchester Country Park. I wonder if you've been there. We had a great time walking around and climbing and running. But at one point, there was a danger sign, a bit like this one. It's telling people to be careful because there's a big, steep drop. If you fell down there, you'd be terribly hurt or you could even die. Ah, it's a scary, scary, it's scary just looking over the edge of it. But suppose one of my daughters starts running towards that cliff. 
what would I do? What would I shout to her? Well, I'd, I'd shout, stop, turn around and come back here. Stop, turn around. In other words, repent. Stop going that way and turn around. Change the way you're going because it leads to destruction and death. Come this way instead. That's what Jesus is saying. When Jesus says repent, he's saying if you want to be part of my kingdom, you need to stop going your own way, wanting to always do everything you want to do, and instead turn around and follow me. You need to stop trying to be the king of your life and follow me, the true king, instead. And that gives me an idea. An idea for our challenge of the week! Okay, this week's challenge is a challenge all about turning around and not falling into disaster. For this challenge, you're going to need two or three cushions or something small and flat that you can stand on. So your task is to go to one end of your room, then carrying all of the cushions, you need to either walk or run across the room as fast as you can without dropping them. If you drop them, you'll have to go back and start again. So run across the room with your cushions, but when you get to the other side, you need to stop and turn around. You need to stop going that way and repent. Turn around and then throw your cushions or your flat items on the ground like stepping stones. Now that you've turned around, you need to start going the other way. But you need to do it the right way. So see if you can get back across the room by jumping only on your stepping stone cushions. A little bit like the floor is lava, with a hop and a skip and a jump. So you'll run away across the room, turn around, and then jump back across the room on your cushions. Are you ready? Give it a go. Well done if you managed to turn around and come all the way back on your stepping cushions. Jesus says we need to repent and believe in him. We need to turn around and start following him. Listening to Jesus instead of just doing what we want. And in our passage, we see the first people to do just that. Did you hear who they were and what their names were? It started down in verse 16 of our passage. It says Jesus saw some fishermen called Simon and Andrew and James and John, all of them in their boats. And did you hear what he said to them? He said, come follow me. Jesus says, come and follow me. And they did. They left their things, turned away from their old life, and started to follow Jesus. Not just that, Jesus also said something that sounds a bit strange. He said, I will send you out to fish for people. Fishing for people? Putting a, a big worm on a hook on the end of a fishing rod and... No, that's not what he means at all. Jesus is telling them that if you follow him, then you've got a new job. You've got a job to do if you're following Jesus. And your new job 
is to pull people in to Jesus. Those fishermen used to always pull fish into their boat by throwing out their nets. But now their new job was to pull people into Jesus' family by telling out the good news about him. So when we see Jesus, when we hear the good news about him, what should we do? Well, Jesus says that we all, you and me, need to repent and believe in him and then go and do our new job. So we need to turn away from doing everything our way and follow Jesus instead, listening to him instead of just doing what we want. And if we're following Jesus, then we all have a brand new job to do, you and me, telling people the good news about him. Repent, believe and serve him. Take a moment now and think, if someone asked you at school, who is Jesus? Then what would you say back? What could you tell your friends about the good news of Jesus? Do you think Simon and Andrew and James and John were a bit scared starting to follow Jesus? I think they were probably a bit nervous and wobbly. But soon they would see that Jesus really was the king worth following. Did you hear in our passage, Jesus told an evil spirit to come out of a man in the synagogue and it did. He made that person well again and taught with authority like a king. And the people were amazed. Jesus is the king and following him is the best. Have you started to follow him yet? Jess is going to lead us now as we pray to God and ask for his help to do just that. Hi Jan, we're going to spend a couple of minutes praying now about all the things that we've heard in the session today. And one thing that might really help you is if you do a little prayer clap and then you close your eyes so you can really concentrate on what we're praying. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much for the session that we've had today. Thank you for all that we have learned from your word. Father, we pray that we would be those who recognise that we need to repent of our sin and to turn back and to follow Jesus. Father God, please help us to see that following Jesus is the best life we could ever lead. And please help us to be those who are bold and want to tell others about him. Please help us to serve Jesus in everything that we do and say. And we pray all of these things in your name. Amen. Thanks, Jess. I've sent your parents a craft activity this week that looks like this. It's a fishing rod reminding us that Jesus calls us to follow him and to fish for people by telling them the good news about him. I've also sent your parents a link to a song called We're Following Jesus. It's all about doing just what those disciples did and following Jesus, listening to what he said and doing the new job he's given each of us to do. Why not listen to it while you do the craft activity? I hope you have a great week. Take care and see you again soon. Bye.